Hi, I'm Luke Alexander, CEO of Nucor Gold. Thanks for joining us for this presentation today. Uh, first thing I'd like to bring your attention to is our disclaimer. Uh, I will be making forward-looking statements during this presentation. I'd encourage you to go to our website and read our disclaimer in more detail. While you're there, please sign up to the various social media platforms that we're uh, active on. We put lots of content there that, that I think you'd find interesting and, um, and look forward to you uh, following us there. Uh, we are an exploration company, district scale project in Ghana, the Enchi project. I'll walk you through that project today and why we're so excited about, about it. Starting here on slide three, uh, some of the things that sets Nucor apart from a number of other companies at our stage and of our size from a market cap perspective, uh, the management team involved, a real track record of success uh, for shareholders and making shareholders a lot of money. Uh, very well institutionally backed. We're currently owned about 35% uh, by institutions. That's about 25 different um, groups who own us at the moment. We're very well aligned as a management team and insiders of the company through our 32% ownership of the business. I think that's really important for shareholders to have that true alignment with the management and, uh, and insiders. We are in Ghana. It's a tier one jurisdiction. It's Africa's largest gold producer, seventh largest producer globally. We've got a great um, uh, asset at the moment, currently sit at about 1.2 million ounces, primarily in the oxide category. So a lot less expensive from a uh, mining perspective to be producing from a, from a heat bleach uh, operation and uh, a real good asset for us to be growing off of. We're um, currently in the middle of a 58,000 meter drill program. That's the largest ever program on this, uh, on this project. And we'll expect to have lots of result, results out over the number of months. And then a really good tight capital structure, only 99 million shares outstanding and no, uh, no warrants, which I think um, uh, really speaks to the quality of the team and the asset that we never had to issue warrants. From a management perspective, uh, this is the board and the, and the management team. These are companies that are that that we've we've uh, we've been involved in uh, from a from a management perspective or, or director perspective. These are all companies that, while I was on the investment banking sell side of the business, that I helped either advise or raise money for. Uh, I spent 12 years in London uh, working with. ASX, TSX, AIM listed companies, advising them, as well as working with large institutional investors, a number of whom are investors of our company today. Um, Greg Smith, he's our VP Exploration, over 30 years exploration experience. He's worked all around the world. He's worked on our Enchi project for the past 10 years. Uh, so he's, uh, he, he's a key member of our team. Mal Karvaska, she's our VP uh, Corp Dev uh, Investor Relations. She's got a really strong capital markets background, uh, has worked for a number of different companies and is uh, is a key part of our, our executive team. Dan Wilson, he's our country manager. He's worked on the Enchi project on and off for the past 20 years. And uh, he's been with us for the past 10 years and he's doing great work on the ground in, uh, in Ghana. ESG is something that's very important for us at Nucor. As a result, we are trying to meet as many of the UN sustainable development goals as possible. Uh, things like donating computers to local schools, installing water wells as part of our current drill campaign, uh, upgrading bridges and fixing roads so that locals can get product to market more easily. And then from a COVID perspective, obviously our employees, uh, contractors and local communities are of utmost importance to us. And as a result, we are doing daily temperature checks. We have policies and procedures in place, hand washing stations and PPE for everybody. So um, one of the things we are fortunate in Ghana is that they have not been as affected with uh, COVID is a number of other parts of the world. So um, that's, a, that's a real benefit for us on the ground as well. In terms of some of the institutional support that we have, uh, you'll see a number of these investors down here are, are long-term dedicated <clears throat> mining or gold-focused investors. They've all become uh, part of, uh, of Nucor's share register. Uh, a number of them became involved when I joined as CEO and Doug Forrester stepped up as chairman and Greg came back as full-time VP Exploration. So to have that kind of support is, uh, is, is crucial for a company of our size, as well as having support from uh, tier one investment banks. Down here in the right-hand corner, you can see that we're currently covered by five major uh, tier one investment banks out of, uh, out of Toronto. And to have that support is really helpful for us to uh, ultimately execute on our, uh, on our plans going forward. 
Ghana, as I mentioned, is Africa's largest gold producer, seventh largest gold producer globally. Uh, and as a result, we've got a very well aligned government through the uh, through the taxes that the mining industry pays, uh, as well as the employment that it creates in country. We also are very fortunate to be able to draw on a huge amount of skilled labor in, in country, and that's a real benefit for, uh, for us on the ground uh, and ultimately for our shareholders. We're located down in the southwest corner of Ghana. If we zoom in a little bit closer, you can see that we've got great neighbors in country. Uh, Kinross just to the north of us, the uh, Bibiani mine just to the north of that, which was just sold to a Chinese group for over $100 million US. And then you've got Newmont to the north of that. As you can see here, they're all 5 million uh, plus ounce uh, endowments with uh, you know Newmont uh, a half a mine sitting at over 15 and a half million ounces. Directly to the south of us, on the other side of the Cote d'Ivoire border, you've got Taranga's AFEMA asset. If you follow Taranga, you'll see that they've been talking very positively about the exploration success they've been having there. So nice to have our neighbors to the south who share some of the same geology, very excited about the opportunity as well. Uh, 216 square kilometer land package, so very large um, acreage that we hold from the north to the south. It's about 40 kilometers in length. We've identified about 25 different targets across our property, of which we've only drilled on six to date. So true district scale opportunity. In terms of our current resource, it sits at 1.22 million ounces. One of the things I like to always highlight is that if you look at the RC and diamond drilling that's been done to make up that 1.22 million ounce resource, it, it equates to about 50,000 meters. So needless to say, the 58,000 meter program that we're doing at the moment is a very significant program and we think will um, meaningfully uh, increase the overall size of our resource. And, uh, and we think that'll be a real, uh, real benefit. In terms of uh, the historical work that, that's been done across our project, a total of about 88 kilometers. So we've got a very good geological understanding of the project uh, to date and something that our team is able to leverage off of. Looking at that 58,000 meter uh, program, it is comprised of both RC and diamond drilling. We are focused on, uh, on, on the existing resource. So Boeing, Seum and Niam, that's what makes up that 1.22 million ounces, about 530,000 ounces sitting at, um, at Boeing, uh, 535 at uh, Seum and 155,000 ounces at Niam. We're also going back to previously drilled areas, areas like Kojina Hill, Quachicrom, and Irati. Uh, we're doing follow-up drilling there. We did some of that at Kojina Hill and Quachicrom in 2020, and we'll get back to all of those areas uh, in the first quarter of this year. And then we're drill focused on um, drilling some, uh, some new targets for the first time ever. So Nakwanta, Sium South, Focusia, as well as uh, other areas, we're, uh, we're looking to drill as part of our 58,000 meter program and make some new discoveries. In terms of things that work well from a ge from an exploration perspective, airborne geophysics, as well as soil samples, we've done over 10,000 soil samples across the project. You can see here that the geophysics lines up very well with the soil sampling. You can see that all of our deposits, as well as targets. One area that I'll highlight is Seum South. It's about a three and a half by two and a half kilometer anomaly. It's the largest anomaly on our project. And we're gonna drill that for the first time ever in, um, uh, in this quarter. So really excited to get down there and do some drilling. Looking here, um, first thing I'll touch on is a lot of people will think of Africa and think it's in the, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I mean, that couldn't be further from the case with us. We've actually got a paved road that goes directly through our property. You can drive 100, 110 kilometers an hour on that road. There's a power line which runs right along it. So very good infrastructure for us to leverage off of. Looking at the uh, at the pyramid now, again, at the top, you can see our deposits, which make up that 1.2 million ounces. Uh, we are going to be drill testing all of these areas um, as uh, as part of this 58,000 meter program, looking to move Kojina Hill, Quachicrom and Arati up into that deposit category over time. And then, as I mentioned, for the first time ever, go and drill areas like Nkwanta, Siyum South, Tokasia, with the ultimate goal of 
um, drilling them, making discoveries, and over time, bringing them up into that deposit category. Outside of that, we've got another 15 odd targets that we've identified, and we'll look to do additional work on those from a trenching, soil sampling, mapping perspective, and prioritize which ones we don't want to drill next. So needless to say, true district scale opportunity here uh, with 25 targets identified, and as I mentioned, only six drilled to date. Looking at our three deposit areas in a little bit more detail, Boeing, Seum, and Niam, you can see all of them are open along strike, highlighted by these, uh, by these yellow arrows. So we will continue to step out and look to uh, increase the overall strike uh, or the overall length of these deposits. And then the results that we um, put out uh, at the beginning of January from Boeing, we put out 25 holes and that was uh, these gap areas here primarily that we've now drilled out, proved that there's mineralization that runs right through here. And over time, our view is that this will just become one large pit. And again, look to continue to hopefully extend those pits along strike as well. Then one of the other big opportunities for us and for our, uh, for our shareholders is to drill at depth. So if you look at these greenstone hosted deposits, uh, they typically really grow in size as you get to depth. We've only scratched the surface, surface to date, only drilling down to an average of about 50 meters with our deepest hole down to about 175 meters vertical. If we now look at this longitudinal section of our Enchi project and compare that to the Trano mine, which sits on the same uh, Bibiani Shear is us and is about 50 kilometers to the north. You can see that where their um, uh, deposits really started to double, triple, and quadruple in size is as they started to drill deeper. The initial discovery hole was made at, at depth at Pabuesi. It was down about 250 meters. 15 meters of 14 grams. And that's the kind of discovery we, we would hope to make um, at, our, uh, at, at, our, um, uh, at our project as well. So we're gonna target Boeing, Seum and Niam uh, to drill at depth uh, at those areas. And uh, we've uh, kicked that off in December of 2020. We've got one, one, our, one diamond rig drilling at the moment and two additional diamond rigs um, that are showing up that will ultimately look to uh, start targeting these, these deeper opportunities opportunities as well. So as a quick recap, I mean, top tier management with a proven track record of shareholder, um, uh, shareholder success, very good capital structure. Uh, we, uh, we, we do have a district scale opportunity uh, in a very well known gold uh, belt. So great opportunity from that perspective. Great opportunity as well for us to grow our resource with a lot of the drilling that we've um, completed to date and that we've reported to the market as well as the additional drilling we'll do. And then those results will continue to come out every three or four weeks over the next number of months. And then we will also look to put out a PEA at the end of Q1, beginning of, uh, of Q2. And that will incorporate the updated resource that we put out as well as a bunch of the drilling that we were able to compete in uh, complete in 20, uh, 2020. So again, I'd encourage you to go to our website, um, connect with us on the various social media platforms. We're always keen to engage with our shareholders and prospective shareholders and look to answer any of your questions. Thank you very much.